Broadleaf by Rocky Patel. Hey everybody, Lincoln, this is Cigar Vlog. Alright, so, Broadleaf from Rocky Patel. I'm not entirely too sure exactly what's going on with this, but it strikes me as being a little familiar because it uh, looks a bit too much like Broadleaf from Alec Bradley, which I think is a thing. I didn't bother to check beforehand, so uh, I don't know, maybe there's a Broadleaf from Alec Bradley? I'll keep. It keeps sticking in my mind for some reason. But, anywho. Big, huge double cap. And it is a Rocky Patel, so provided I can cut right. There we go. This construction and flavor should be good. I could have swore that there was another line very similar to this from Alec Bradley called Broadleaf. It has a similar style of banding. And overall quality and construction, as it were. Fuck it, I'm not screwing out the light. I have to probably already screwed up the light. Anyway. Right off the bat. I'm thinking about getting a mouthful of tobacco crumbs from a fucked up cut. Not bad. Slightly sweet. A little kind of baking spice. Couple other notes going on there. Excuse me while I have to dribble my own tongue. Anyway, oh, that's a nasty little stick with a bunch of cobwebs over it. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, so far just lightly sweet. A little baking spice. Um, so I want to say several flavors that I can't quite pinpoint right at this moment. Not any, not anything like coffee or anything, but just honestly, kind of reminds me a little bit of gingerbread right now. So anyway, I'm gonna smoke this down to the first inch and see if anything actually uh, kind of defines itself. Also, I'm gonna get away from this stupid bird that has a tweet that sounds like somebody's calling it a penalty in a ball game. Tweet, tweet. Yeah. Blam! Alright, <laughs> anyway, I'll get back to you in an inch. Yep, yeah, that is about the most Colorado thing I have seen all day. Susie's CBD dog treats. Because clearly Fido needs to get high. Don't get me wrong, I don't have anything against dogs, but it is getting a little out of hand. Especially when you start finding people that think that their dog is going to benefit from weed in their dog treats. That doesn't make any sense. At least not to me, it doesn't. Anyway, check that up for another dumb things you see in this state. Oh boy. Anyway. Okay, so pretty good inch in and a nice little takeaway tunnel, as usual. Hope I'm not too overexposed here. So far, flavors have been uh, kind of what they started as. I want to say there's a slight kind of bittery coffee note. Yes, I think it's coffee. I do know I am getting very sidetracked because of the fact that there is a Mexican restaurant over like that way-ish somewhere. And every so often the wind hits just right, then you get a big nose full of chimichangas. Then I start losing my train of thought and thinking, hmm, chimichangas wouldn't be good, it wouldn't be bad right now. Wouldn't be good for the toilet, but it wouldn't be bad. Hmm. But anyway, <laughs> that's kind of just a weird digression there. <sighs> anyway, so far this uh, seems to have a lot of flavors going on. Nothing's really standing out, so hopefully, by the time I get to the halfway point, something will kind of wake up and assert itself. So I'm going to go ahead and smoke this down and uh, see if that actually happens. Well, Ash just uh, decided to flop off. <coughs> I figured this is as good a half a point as any. Uh, I think I may have screwed up my light a little bit. It seems to kind of want to canoe a little 
So that's probably just on my that's probably my fault. Uh, anyway, flavors so far have been giving me a very kind of gingerbread graham crackery vibe. I was kind of thinking that maybe I was getting a little coffee note, but I think that was just me kind of looking for a flavor to stand out. What really stands out though is this kind of sweet baking spice breadiness, especially in the retro ale. <coughs> very bready retro ale. Trying to think, I maybe need a new cutter or something. We'll look at that. Anyway, so far, one drink comes to mind for uh, pairing with this particular cigar. An old fashioned, an old classic, old fashioned. Pretty much because of the fact that uh, you get that nice whiskey flavor and those bitters, and I think that's going to be a good complement to the kind of gingerbread note or graham cracker note that you find in the actual cigar. Anyway, like I said, nothing's really standing out. It's just kind of giving you an overall vibe of what's going on. So hopefully by the time I get down to the nub, it'll either A, build, or B, stay consistent, one of the two. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and hit and yank the band as well because it's uh, just not really needing to be there anymore. All right, so I'll get back to you in the nub. Okie doke. Seems like a pretty good nub point here. Because you're about that all the flavors are starting to get washed out and just tastes like hot tobacco. Uh, so far, flavors were pretty consistent throughout. Kind of one of those deals of uh, <sighs> not exactly a whole lot of transitions or anything like that. But uh, what was there is good. Like I said, it's got this kind of a uh, graham crackery, baking spice kind of deal, kind of ginger British kind of deal. <sighs> yeah, it's like 90 degrees out, so I'm trying not to sweat all over myself. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> word of caution about Rocky Patel cigars. Rocky tends to blend a little strong, so if you're kind of sensitive to nicotine, these can bomb you. That said, if you have something sweet, like an old fashioned with sugar in it, or like a soda, Something that has actual sugar, you should be all right. Basically, the theory behind this is uh, that nicotine does weird stuff like tanking your blood sugar. So when that drops too low, you end up getting nauseous and barf on the yarn. Barf on the yard, not the yarn. Unless you have like a really weird knitting thing going on. Why? Well, I, I have no idea. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> Decent cigar. Good little companion cigar, just kind of hang out with your friends, enjoy an old-fashioned, or coffee, or whatever you like. Just, uh, I would definitely re recommend something that has some sh uh, like actual sugar, just because of the fact that these can get a little uh, over the top if you're not careful. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this. Obviously, I'm going to continue smoking this down until it burns my fingers. But uh, for most people, this is pretty much the end point for them. Flavors are really starting to wash out at the end. I have had uh, something of note, um, a couple of uh, issues with making touch-ups here and there. And I could, could attribute this to my light, or I could attribute this to the fact that this is kind of a gordo. And the gordo size has a little bit of an issue with being a little too big. Is you probably shouldn't go any bigger than about a 55 gauge if you want an enjoyable experience, unless you're like, you know, really into the big stuff. In which case, hey, if you 60 flows your boats, that's fine. But uh, just keep in mind, Gordos can have burn issues, and this one kind of had a little bit of that. Nothing real major, just a couple touch ups here and there. Well, and anyway, that's pretty much all I got for this one. If you like this review or any other review, like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know if you had a different experience, or if you uh, want to see something reviewed. I could definitely use suggestions because the catalog of things that I have not done from Cigars International is getting a little scarce. Also, it's kind of uh, odd trusting other sites for your information. Especially if it's like Thompson, because they do weird stuff to like sign you to a other way. They like to mess with you. Anyway. <sighs> yes, Wynn, thank you. I totally wanted that breeze blown all over my eye. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, anyway, that's it for this one. Check out my Twitch stream. Sundays to Friday nights, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Usually recorded for a little bit afterwards. Whew. All right, that's all I got. I'll see you next time.